Today, I present you with this very sad and awful snowflake animation. Merry Christmas and happy holidays? Yeah, I, I don't think so, not quite yet. This is dull, boring, and not quite so happy. These snowflakes are junk, and we really need to fix them up to uh, bring up the holiday spirit. All right, to fix the snowflakes, I'm gonna make eight really quick adjustments, as well as a couple of really interesting fusion tricks. Tell me which ones you would have done and maybe what else you would have done differently to make it even better. We're really trying to create the ultimate, most awesome, best snowflake animation of all time. Comment below and let me know how many you guessed. Okay, are you ready? It's time to make the first change. You see what that was? We adjusted the size. It looks a little bit better, but there's so much more we can do. So snowflakes don't always fall at the same speed. So we're gonna adjust the speed, make it a little bit better. So some of them are gonna go down fast and some of them are gonna kind of float down a little bit slower. Okay, we're getting there, making a little bit of progress. Okay, I originally said eight, but there's one other thing I wanted to add. I'm gonna slide it in right here. Um, the snowflakes are falling. We got some different sizes, some different speeds, but they're all coming down like this. It's not great, so we're gonna add a little bit of rotation. So we're gonna kind of slide this into my list of eight. Um, so there's really gonna be nine. I said eight in the beginning, but let's go with nine because adding stuff is always good. All right, obviously this is the winter. What do you get with winter? You got windy, breezy days. So we need to have these snowflakes kind of float around and move a little bit in the wind. They're not all gonna fall straight down. So we're gonna add a little bit of turbulence and that's gonna create a little effect where they're a little bit more floating. All right, have you picked out the major issue with the snowflakes? Yeah, that's right. They're all exactly the same. If it's, if you got snowflakes, you're gonna get all kinds of different, really interesting shapes, sizes, patterns, all kinds of things. So this is where I have a really interesting fusion trick where I'm gonna take uh, one snowflake and we're gonna be able to use this one kind of design and really quickly turn it into all kinds of different patterns really easily. All right, we got the wind blowing, we got different shapes, different sizes, different speeds, but uh, the snowflakes are all kind of flat. They need to be flowing a little bit better and spinning and flipping in the wind. So we're gonna add um, a little bit of 3D rotation to have the snowflakes move around a lot more naturally as they're falling from the sky. All right, we're building a pretty good scene here. It's looking a lot better. All right, I don't know if this is gonna help, but we're gonna try changing the color. I'm gonna make them a little bit of a blue, kind of give them that wintry blue, cold kind of feel. And the last thing, one more thing, um, obviously I probably don't think we're at the ultimate snowflake yet, but we're a lot better than what we started with. Um, we're gonna add a little bit of glow on these snowflakes, kind of make them glow just a little bit. All right, I think we made an improvement. Um, maybe we're ready to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and all that kind of good stuff. It's a lot closer. I'm happy with it. Well, at least I think I'm happy with it because I haven't done it yet, but I have a feeling in my head it's gonna be at least a little bit of an improvement. Um, let me know what different things that you might have done. I'm sure there's a lot of um, different techniques and things to make this even better. I'd be interested to hear your comments below. I'm gonna show you how to quickly and easily create a basic snowflake shape and how you can take that shape and adjust it with just a few simple tweaks to create uh, almost an unlimited number of patterns really quickly. And it's time to make a snowflake. We're gonna use the shape system to do it. And it's gonna be kind of interesting because we're gonna use a few tricks that are gonna enable us to take one kind of setup and turn it into lots of different snowflakes really quickly. We'll take a background node and put it in the node area and connect it up to media out. And we're gonna start with a basic shape. So we're gonna hit the node area, hit control space and search for S polygon. And we're gonna need a render node, control space, S render. And we're gonna take the render and merge it right on top of the background. Now click the polygon and we're gonna create our first shape. And it's just gonna be a straight line going up. Let me zoom in here, click on the, the top and go down to the middle. And we got a kind of a line there. And we can't see anything yet because we need to bump up the border size. There we go. Can kind of make, we can play with the thicknesses of this in a little bit. That's the starting shape. Now we're gonna add a couple more shapes to this and then spin it around and do some interesting things. So we're gonna add a uh, kind of a diamond to the top of there. So we're gonna do con hit control space and search for S rect. So we get the S rectangle and we're gonna take the S rectangle and merge it right on top of that polygon and it's way too big. Right click on height and choose expression and we're gonna take this and drag it right onto the width. So as we adjust the width, the height will adjust as well. So let's bring this down and we're gonna rotate it a bit, put the angle at 45 and we're gonna just drag it right up to the top of that line. Probably make it a little bit smaller. And this is where we can adjust these things and get it exactly like we want after we have the basic shape set up. Okay, we're gonna just add a couple more things and that's all it's really gonna take. Um, we're gonna add another polygon Hit, uh, hit in the node area, hit control space and search for S polygon and drag that in there. Select this polygon and we're just gonna make a little, uh, little snowflake arm right here and bump up the width. So that's kind of the, that's gonna be the starting point. Now, snowflakes are kind of a repeating pattern. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mirror this and create the same stuff on the other side. 
Actually, let's make one little more, uh, one more of these polygon things. And this time we're going to kind of go, we'll click here, we'll go up and back down like that. And we can kind of move this around, add a little border width, merge it in. And that's what we got. Let's uh, adjust these points just a bit. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, transform node to flip this. Click in the node area, hit control space and search for S transform. And we're going to take the output of this merge and put it into the transform. So what we can do is we can take the uh, this transform, let's put that in the viewer, and we're going to set the X size to minus one. And that flipped it the other way. All right, let's make two viewers here. So we got uh, the merge is in the left viewer and the transform is in the right viewer. So we got the flip thing. So we need to put these together. And this is going to be kind of one of the arms of the snowflake. So we're going to take this S merge here and hit control space and do, uh, I'm going to add another merge, reconnect that. And we're going to take this flipped one and put it right back on top. And let's take a look what we have in the render. And now you notice that there's something odd going on here, and I'm not sure exactly why this is, but everywhere where these shapes overlap, they kind of are knocking each other out. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this merge here, and we're going to add a um, S Boolean. So hit Control Space and search for S Boolean, and take the transform and put it into the Boolean. Now the, the Boolean allows us to do a merge with some operations. What we're going to do is we're not going to do an intersection, we're going to do a union. And we got the uh, kind of the first spoke of our snowflake. The next step is to just duplicate it and spin it around. So uh, click on the S Boolean, hit control space and search for S duplicate. And we're gonna do, uh, let's see, we can do five copies and we can adjust the rotation. And there we got a nice looking snowflake. Now we're gonna want this to be kind of a little more customizable. What I want to do here is we're gonna set the rotation. We're gonna right click on it and we're gonna set it to be an expression and it's gonna be 360 degrees divided by the copies. As we add or remove copies, we're gonna get more things. So there's a two, three, so we can add a lot of different things into our snowflake. And you'll see here, if we go to the, um, the snowflake, we can start making adjustments and create some really different looks as well. Just by adjusting a few of these lines, and you can add all kinds of shapes, all kinds of lines in here. There's lots of different options. So we can take the rectangle and adjust the width and height, adjust the corner radius on it, little circles, lots of different options. Okay, how can we take this and get lots of different shapes? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to adjust the number of the, uh, the little arms or spokes or whatever you wanna call them. And the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna add an outline node. Click on S duplicate, control space, and search for S outline. And we're gonna bring the thickness down. And this is where we can start playing with some really interesting stuff. So we can just take the length and bring it down like that and then adjust the position Okay, so what I wanna do is be able to animate these copies to create different versions of the snowflake. So we're gonna start out with five. So give me five copies. We're gonna keyframe that. We're gonna go one frame over and let's make it six. We're gonna go one frame over and we'll make it seven. Another frame and eight. So these first four frames were kind of cycling between the different patterns, the different number of snowflake arms there. So all of a sudden we're, we're getting some different looks pretty easily just by changing that number. Okay, we're gonna make a change here because I did something different when I originally did this and we just need to adjust it. So the way these lines are drawing on, this is what I was gonna to use to create different shapes, but because of the S Boolean, they don't draw on the way I was wanting to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this S Boolean and we're gonna add another uh, merge. So there's our merge. Gonna disconnect this and take the output. Remember, this is our one branch. Take it into our transform, which flips it, and we're gonna take the flipped one and put it back into this merge. And this is where we kind of have this funny looking uh, thing here where the overlaying lines don't quite work. But this is actually gonna work for us in this case. So let's go back to this S outline. And now when we adjust the position, you'll see here, we're gonna get all kinds of different shapes. And the length. So we get different kinds of looking snowflakes. And also you'll notice as we go through here with the number of branches, we're gonna get a lot of different looks too. Yeah, that's looking really good. And so we can kind of play with the length. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe the length and position. So let's uh, hit a keyframe on the position. We'll go over about uh, 30 frames and move the position all the way over. So in 30 frames, we're gonna have a lot of different looks. And we're gonna do the same thing with the length. We're gonna um, take the length and we'll keyframe it right in here, go over about 20 frames and move it up into like that. And then we're gonna go to the spline editor, check off both of those. Um, highlight it, and we just want both to repeat. 
So we're going to get the position, select both points, and we're just going to click repeat, and it's going to repeat that animation. Same thing with the length. We're going to select both points on the length and repeat that animation. And let's take a look at what we have. Well, lots of different things, and now we need to repeat the uh, the number of the little spokes there. So we're going to go to the duplicate, click on the duplicate down here in the key in the uh, spline editor. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to take this animation, these keyframes, select them and hit repeat. And we have a lot of different snowflakes changing really quickly. All right, so how do we, how are we going to use this? Let's we're going to put this into the particle system. So let's move this down here and we're going to disconnect this render for our shape and we're going to add in a particle emitter. Real quickly we're going to set this up. We're going to click region and we want it to be a, uh, a rectangle. And so I, since, let's go back to one viewer here. Um, since snowflakes fall from the sky, we're gonna take this and move it up. And we're gonna make it wider like that and just kind of move it up right off of the frame. So all the snowflakes are gonna start right here and they're gonna fall down. So in the emitter, we want the style, we want it to be a bitmap. That means we're gonna take an image for the particle emitter. So let's take the output of the render and put it into the particle emitter and put the particle emitter in the viewer. Now we need to add a render node so that it'll take all the particles and make them. With the emitter selected, hit control space and search for P render. That's a particle render. And we're gonna take the, uh, let's put that in the viewer. And there you go. Let's, we're gonna start out with, uh, we're just gonna do this, start out for 2D for this. And we see we've got some particles up there, but they're not going anywhere. So we're gonna take the output of the emitter and put it into the merge and put this in the viewer. Okay, first thing we want to do is we want to get the particles to fall. With the emitter selected, we're going to go to controls, velocity, and we're going to bump this up a bit. We have the particles moving, but we want them to go down. So we're going to go to the angle and make it minus 90. I think that's what'll do it. We have a lot of them falling. Obviously way too many, so let's set the number down to like 0.5 and play the animation. You see the, uh, the snowflakes are changing. So we don't want, what we want to do is go to the style and change the animate over time. So it's gonna take, over time means it's taking the animation from the uh, our snowflake render. So right now it's set to animate over time. This is in the style tab. That means it's gonna use the animation from the S render, but we want it to be at particle birth time. And that means it's gonna use the, what it looked like when the particle was created. And look at that, all of these snowflakes are gonna be, they're gonna be kind of different. Some really interesting looks there. All right, so let's go through the steps. So we have some snowflakes falling, they're kind of some different shapes, which is good, but we need to go at um, different speeds. So we're gonna go back to the particle emitter and all we gotta do is vary the velocity. And we got some falling faster and some falling slower. Okay, that's the first step. Let's go to, uh, let's go to spin. And all we're gonna do is adjust the Z spin and the variance. So now they're gonna be spinning kind of at different amounts. You can adjust that how you like it. I'm not going in order here, but we're going through each of the steps. Let's make them different sizes. So click on style and go to size control. And this is where you can adjust the base size of the snowflake and then size variance. So that's what's gonna help us out. So that's gonna make some of them bigger and some of them smaller. We have some little bitty ones. So we're gonna bring down the size variance, make them a little bit closer together. All right, now we need the cold wintry day with the blowing wind. And that's where we're gonna use the turbulence. So with the P meter selected, hit control space and search for P turb, you lens. And we can adjust the X and Y strength. So we're gonna have them blow around a little bit. There they go, the wind is blowing, it's kicking in. We can adjust the X strength, which is the left to right, and the Y strength, which is gonna be the up and down. And play with the density and kind of have all kinds of different interesting things going on. Getting better step by step. Um, now let's kind of change the color and add a little bit of glow. So outside of the uh, the P the P render, we're gonna hit the control space and search for, S, uh, search for um, soft glow. Just kind of makes it a little bit nicer. And we're gonna adjust the color and make them kind of blue and bring down and bring down the red. Kind of a nice wintry blue, light blue there. I'm gonna kind of bring down the glow a little bit. Look at all those snowflakes falling. All right, that's kind of fun. Okay, we have the snowflakes blowing in the wind, but we need to have them flipping and turning in all kinds of different directions. Now, let's go back into the P emitter and hit controls and scroll down here and you'll notice something in this spin. We have some 3D options. That means we can have the particle spinning in 3D space, which is gonna be great for the effect we're trying to do. All right, we're gonna disconnect the, uh, the soft glow. We have this uh, particle render. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say this is 3D and let's take a look at it. So now we have the particles kind of in a 3D space falling down and we're gonna add a, uh, let's see, a particle render. And we can take the output of the render and then put that into the soft glow. And let's take a look at what we have. 
a lot of them fall in there. That looks pretty good. So what we need to do is um, we're going to add a camera on here. We're going to add a 3D merge and put a camera on it. And that's going to allow us to set which parts of the 3D system we're looking at. And you see right here, our camera's right in the middle of our particle. So all we need to do is grab that camera and slide it back a little bit. And the camera is going to be looking at our particles. Let's see what we got in the media out. It's looking pretty good. It looks like we need to uh, turn on this glow a little bit, a little bit strong. And let's back up the camera. I think we're going to make the particles a little bit bigger and last longer. So let's go to the emitter and we're going to do style. Let's make them a little bit bigger and go to controls and they last hundred frames. Let's uh, make them last a little bit longer. Yeah, it looks like they're kind of falling off here where they're going out. So I think what we need to do is move the render area down. Let's go to the P emitter and we're going to take the uh, region and let's just bring it down the Y offset to where they start right near the top and yeah, they need to move a little bit faster. And so that's where we're going to take the velocity. You can just kind of adjust these things and bring the velocity up so that they fall faster. Anyway, you can just play with these things. I think you get the idea. Okay, so we have falling particles and let's go to the 3D area like I showed you. And we're going to change the, the 3D X, X variance, Y and Y variance and nothing happens. Okay, and that's because there's this checkbox up here in rotation that says that the particle should always face the camera. Well, we want the particle spinning and flipping, so let's uncheck that. And look at that. We have, they're flipping way too fast. These are crazy snowflakes. So what we're gonna do, let's reset these and turn it down a whole lot to where they're just kind of barely floating along and spinning around. Um, you can just play with these numbers, do a little bit of the variation. These things are kind of popping onto the screen. I think this is where we need to take the, uh, the render area and move it up a little bit or adjust the camera. That's there better. They're spinning and flipping. We'll take the turbulence and we'll, let's go crazy with it and see what we can see what we can make happen. Look at that. Okay, so that's the basic animation. Um, it creates the uh, the snowflake from this piece, and we can actually uh, change this up and really do lots of different shapes. We merge it back in, then we use the duplicate node to to kind of create more spokes on it and the outline node to create, to turn it into all kinds of different snowflakey looking shapes. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below and let me know what you think. If you have any uh, questions, ideas, suggestions, I'd love to hear them. There's always room for improvement. I hope everyone is having an amazing holiday season. Really enjoy it with your family, friends, and loved ones. I will talk to you guys soon.